Hi there, this is One Q Food Platter and I am Iko Uko. We're going to be cooking afan today. That's the recipe for today. Afan just is that epic dish, or should I say Ibibio epic dish, that has found its way into many restaurants around Nigeria. So whether you're in Abuja or Kano or Enugu or Lagos, trust me, you'll find afan on their menu. But what's the secret to cooking a good pot of afan? I'll take you through that. So the main ingredient for this soup, of course, is afan. And this is what the afan leaves look like. Now, there are many varieties of afan. Uh, you have the one they call the Cameroon afan. You have the one they call the Nigerian afan. You have Oron afan. I tend to use, you know, the Oron afan because it has a stronger aroma. And when you use it in cooking, it thickens. You know, there are some varieties of afan when you buy, I'm not even sure of those, you know, myself. You find out that the whole thing just separates in the soup. Water is going one direction, the leaves are going in another direction. So, to be safe, I buy from Oron. Now, the Igbos call this Okazi, and the Cameroonians call it Eru. Uh, well, for the Cameroonians, look, they are just, um, it's just geography the ocean dividing Cross River Aquaibo from Cameroon. So no wonder we share uh, some culinary similarities. Now for the afan, I also like to wash before slicing. I know people slice in the market, but for me, when I see how this is transported, the dirt and all of that, I rather wash at home and slice. So I slice into, it slides into this thing, as thin as this, and you have to get it this thin uh, so that when you pound, you have the little shreds, you know, coming out because somebody could say, really, why bother to pound after shredding? The point is that pounding releases more aroma of afan and it also gives it a nice texture. So that's for afan. Now the thing you need to pair afan with, of course, is the water leaf. In the dry season, I would use three portions of water leaf to one portion of afan. But in the rainy season, when the water leaf is a lot, has a lot more water content, I use two to one. So those are the main ingredients. Now for our proteins. This is silver catfish, smoked. Sometimes I use this, but there's another fish I prefer for my afan, which is not the silver catfish. So we'll come to that. Some peppers, of course. Snail, this is optional if you can afford it. But Ikba brother, you need you need pomo in it. We call it Ikba brother in Efe, but this is pomo that you need uh, for this dish. Periwinkles, I think it just brings a different eating experience, you know, to Afan. But you know, there are different varieties of periwinkles. I prefer to use these ones that come with the spice. I find that it is sweeter and you don't it's less bitter. Let, let, let me put it that way. So this I also prefer in my Afan. You need some crayfish and then stockfish, ekoroko. You can buy any part of it that you can afford. Uh, usually the stockfish head is uh, reasonably priced, so you can use it, but if you can afford the whole one, which is the cod, cut into chunks, then you use. I talked about the fish. Um, in my family, I prefer the shiny nose. First, it's less fishy in terms of the aroma in the dish. So I prefer this, you know, to any other type of fish. And so usually I buy it whole. You know, it comes like that. My goodness, this is quite some big fish. But it comes like this. I buy from Oron as well. When it comes, I open it up. If it's not very dry, I put it, you know, in the little chunks in the microwave, which absorbs the moisture. And then I wrap in newspapers and keep in the freezer. Because the thing with fish is that when it is very lightly smoked and you put in the freezer, it just comes off in little powder when, when you're cooking with it. Uh, did I mention crayfish? We'll need some crayfish, some seasoning, and some salt. So let's get cooking now. So, our meat has been boiling, uh, had started boiling before now. I have stock fish, I have a pomo or ikba brother. You know, for me, I like bone. I don't know, there's something about afan. When I finished eating, I then settle with the bone to address it. So we have that. What I'll then do is to add the snail. You know, you don't cook the snail for too long. Um, I actually like my snail crunchy. 
so a few pieces. Like I said earlier, this is one soup you can really go to town. But for me, beef, pomo, stockfish, snail, some periwinkle. Well, let me start with the fish. The smoked fish, which has been washed. I add all of this, enhancing the flavor of the soup. I then, at this point, let me taste for salt and seasoning. I think um, I'll need just a little salt at this point. But you know you can correct your salt at any point in your cooking. So this, to this I'll add the periwinkle. For me, adding periwinkle at this point <clears throat> is to help it get all the new ingredients and the flavors in and cook the periwinkle. So we do that allow it to boil and then we'll come back and add crayfish and the other ingredients so we'll check on this that's good enough we'll add our crayfish at this point you know for crayfish again you grind very smooth before adding this is all that you know we have that adds to the flavor of this dish so ground crayfish goes in and something that I like, which is pepper. Um, today I'm using yellow and red pepper. You know, there's something about the flavor of pepper in our fans. Like you see, it just tensions your neighbor. So I, you know, pound it quietly. I eat a lot of pepper, but look, adjust to your pepper level. We stir that. Um, at this point, I think I would just need to add a little some little water so that we have enough sauce in the soup. The thing about water and afan is, is with experience you learn to control the water, watching the quantity of afan that you have. But you know, just stay with the water just being at the level of the meat. You would not go wrong then. If you then need to add a little bit more water, you can do that. So we'll allow that to bubble up a bit and then we add the palm oil. You know, the essence of having everything ready, palm oil and all of that, is so that when you add the water leaves and you add the afang, in five minutes, the soup is done because you don't want your afang to overcook. So let's allow that to boil. Cook the pepper a bit. We add the palm oil. Cook that a bit. And then we add the vegetables. And that's it for afang. We'll check now. Oh my goodness. The aroma is something else. I mean, look, my camera guys are having a problem with this now, but okay, let's go ahead. So the next thing we do is to add the palm oil. Um, always remember to shake your palm oil. Afan takes quite a bit of palm oil, but you know, you can reduce your palm oil as well if, if, if you don't want it to be too oily. So we add the palm oil. Yeah, about, about that quantity for the size of uh, that I'm cooking. You know, with Nigerian cooking, you eyeball, you eyeball everything practically. I'll taste for seasoning, um, just to be sure. Just a little seasoning cube. Actually, with good quality crayfish, trust me, and good quality fish, you might not need, you know, much seasoning. As you can see, I'm using just a little. I had used just one cube to boil the meat, and um, yeah, that, that's about it. The salt is fine. So we just allow that to bubble for just two minutes and then I'll come back and add the water leaf. Yes, time to add our water leaf. Remember I said for the dry season, you might just need a little bit more because then the water leaf does not have much water in it. Um, so it's a question of three portions to one of the pounded afang. When I add my water leaf, generally I allow it to wilt in the pot, um, particularly during the rainy season because after, uh, water leaf sorry, has a little bit of slime. So I avoid stirring just so that the soup is not slimy. If I'm stirring, I stir a bit. You can see I'm using wooden spoon. For me, it's also to prevent that sliminess from coming through. So we'll allow that to go down. 
and then we come back to the other. So we'll check. I know it's okay to go. As you can see, the water leaf has released its own liquid in there. So this is why you need to be careful when adding water at the beginning. That's good. And at this time, I turn off the heat. For some people, they'll add the affine straight and continue to cook. But for me, I know that the heat of the soup will cook the affine. Now, talking about affine, I don't do everything at once when I'm cooking. I always have pounded affine in the freezer. I always have cut periwinkle in the freezer. So really, for me, affine is something I can actually cook during the week as well. So we turn off the heat and add the affine at this point. And you see, the, the, the reason why you always should keep some afang in the freezer, I mean, just in case the water becomes too much, therefore you can just reach out in your freezer and get some um, additional afang and add. Because this is a soup that is supposed to be fairly thick. Not too thick, but fairly thick. The aroma of the afang is also so, 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 so good. So like I said, the heat, the heat of the of the pot cooks the airfang through. So we allow that and that's it. As you can see, everything is still green and the airfang will thicken as it goes. You know, just give it a few more minutes without actually boiling. The airfang gets quite thick and that's because I have good quality airfang here. What I need next is some fufu or some gari, but I'll do that after this time. So that's it for our afang. I'll just dish and do some justice to this. Remember I said I like the bone. Um, when I'm done with eating, I then settle and have my bone, crack the bone. And so that's why sometimes I actually use what people generally call biscuit bone, but it's called brisket bone. So we dish that. You know, sometimes with Afang, it's difficult to search for the, all the obstructions. But, you know, you, you try as much as possible to include as much in the plate. But a lot more of the vegetable. I think that will do. I'll get some fufu and deal with that. So, that's it for our Afang. You know, as you can see, I leave it slightly open. For me, usually what I do immediately after cooking, I dish into small portions and freeze. I don't leave the whole, um, you know, soup in a big bowl, just so that each family member can take their portion and have a nice meal. Remember to subscribe, and also follow my journey on Instagram, on Facebook, and visit my website for interesting recipes. Until next time, Bye for now.